Good day, everybody. You're welcome once again to Great Miracles Avenue. Um, if this is your first time, you are welcome. If you are an already subscribing member, thank you for staying with us till date. Well, today we'll be talking about um, a very crucial matter that affects each and every one of us, you know, directly or indirectly. Um, but before we delve into today's topic, I'd like us to, you know, share a word of prayer. Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the lives of everybody here. I commit each and every other person into your care. I might not know what someone is battling with, I might not know what someone is going through, but I know for a fact that you are with them every step of the way. It is my prayer that you keep everyone safe from any troubles that they might be going through. May you be their comforter, may you guide their path, and in the end we say glory, thanks, and I in adoration be unto your name. As we are about to share this message, Father Lord, let everyone be educated and learn something from it. And in the end, we say glory, thanks, and I in adoration be unto your name. There's a meaning more that we ask through your beloved Son, Jesus. Amen. So with recent happenings, right, if care is not taken, it's going to make the American nation weep bitterly in a few days to come. What I'm about to share with you is not just shocking, but it is mind-blowing. And it has every ability or it has potential to actually cast a dark shadow over the American nation. And it's crazy. It is threatening to explode and leave a long-lasting effect or impact on the two nations. In recent development happenings of the U.S.-Mexico border, a situation is unfolding that if left unchecked, is going to cripple the nation in ways that we can never imagine and recover from. It's threatening to explode and, you know, leave a lasting impact on the fate of the two nations. The stakes are high and the implications are far-reaching and this actually demands uh, concern. It actually demands our attention and our collective concerns as a nation and as a people in the nation. Yes, and lots of people are actually hoping for um, a solution or be hoping for a resolution that stares us away from the actual impact of the situation at hand right now and hoping that whatever outcome you know is not as negative as expected uh, to be so the next few minutes into the video is is very crucial so i'd like you all to stay with me and understand the video vividly and also don't forget to share with your friends and your family to you know also help them become aware of what is happening around us and let your thoughts be known in the comment section. Uh, let's deliberate on how best to curb the situation. Okay, so this particular information that I'm about to share with you all is an information that was all over the place across the country, but for prominence sake, I'd like us to stick with this particular um, news outlet. It was captured on their website and, you know, they revealed this fearful truth that we wouldn't want to know about. And I read, A migrant caravan departed Mexico's southern city of Tapachula on Monday as the Biden administration rushes up pressure on Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador to impose tighter limitations on migrants crossing his country. The reportedly 6,000 strong caravan is the largest organized group of migrants to form in Tapachula since the year 2022. When news of a similarly sized caravan threatened to overshadow the summit of the Americans hosted in Los Angeles by the Biden administration. So the new Christmas caravan promises to be a political headache for both President Biden and Lopez. As Secretary of State Antony, Homeland Security Secretary Alejandro, and White House Homeland Security Advisor Liz Sherwood 
are due to meet the Mexican president on Wednesday. That meeting will follow phone conversations between the two presidents in which Lopez called on Biden to reduce sanctions on Cuba as part of a strategy to reduce migration in the hemisphere. Actions to reopen the border ports are urgently needed. Speaker Johnson urges Biden to take executive actions on the border. Texas governor's move sets up showdown with feds over border, but according to local reports, the caravan is in part motivated by the Mexican enforcement actions in Tapachula near the border with Guatemala. So according to Dario del Sur, a local publication, more than 100,000 migrants are stored in the city awaiting paperwork, allowing them to transit through Mexico. So in the past, Mexico's strategy of slow walking papers has led to unrest among migrants eager to leave the country's poorest regions. That unrest can contribute to the organizations of caravans in which migrants travel together both for protection against organized crimes and against extortion demands from corrupt Mexican politicians or officials. According to reports, the caravan's leaders are carrying banners calling the movement an exodus from poverty and is mainly composed of people from Cuba, Haiti, and Honduras. And, um, you know, the problem is that the southern border with Guatemala is actually opened and on a daily basis, we have people of about 800 to 1,000 people crossing it daily. According to the activist Garcia, if they do not get out of the town on time, the town is going to collapse. And um, currently, the president, Biden, is under um, pressure to reduce the number of U.S.-Mexico apprehensions. And, you know, it's actually crazy and it's really getting out of hand because the figure keeps increasing day in, day out. On the Southwest alone, um, figures of about 200,000 has also been recorded. And all these figures are just in a period of 24 months. So the Biden administration is actually telegraphing a revamped emphasis on immigration enforcement as a means to reduce um, these numbers of deportation. And another alarming thing that we should be very concerned about when it comes to you know immigrants' population increasing is the fact that there's going to be a lot of pressure on our social welfare, our housing, our, our welfare programs, and it's not just going to be affecting you know those coming in, it's going to be affecting we in the system already too. And also if you didn't know, there are over 100,000 immigrants waiting for paperwork to be you know, done to transit successfully into the country. Over 100,000 of them. There might be more. There are definitely more. So in all of these happenings, right, one thing that I am mostly concerned about or in one aspect that lots of people have actually shown concern in is the increase in crime. Of course, um, more immigrants are coming in, if not managed well. The rates of crimes in the country are going to be increased because, of course, there are pressure in every aspect of life, economical, financial, shelter, everything. And so that is one thing that is inevitable if it is not managed properly. So um, in my own personal opinion, right, one thing that I would like to share is that in the midst of all these going on, right, a growing uh, migrant caravan, the U.S. government must prioritize the enhancement of immigration processes as a crucial step toward curbing the challenges posed by a large group of migrants. And also by focusing on this key aspect, policymakers 
cannot only alleviate the pressure but also contribute to a, a more efficient immigration system. But the big question everyone is asking or everyone would be asking at this point is how all of them need to be possible, right? Yeah, so um, I know lots of you would actually want to suggest a few things that can help this particular um, problem we have at hand. You can do so in the comment section. Um, let's just share ideas on how best we think um, this problem at hand could be solved. And um, so with all these happening here, yeah, some people are also of the school of thoughts that, you know, this whole immigration thing or people really moving into the country uh, as a result of the war happening between Israel and Hamas. Yeah, so that is the reason. And it has, it is or has inflicted um, fear in lots of people because, I mean, who wants to have wars in their country? We all know the results of war, you know, and no one would like to have such an experience. I mean, we all know the effect of wars on countries, of the people in it, and no one really wants that for their country. So with all these things being said and discussed, I know lots of us are worried, lots of us are really troubled because we'd all want to be in a safe world. we we'll all want to be in a safe space where we can all cohabitat like peacefully, but this is the case where um, wars are happening and because of that we're facing the effects and they're not looking too good for anyone, be it citizen, be it immigrants, be it whoever it is, we're all not having it easy. So this is where your faith, your teachings, your values as a Christian and as someone who has studied the scriptures over the years comes in. because. Yes, so all of these things are in the Bible that during the end times we're going to see countries rise against countries, people rise against each other. The, the world as a whole is not going to be that perfect place for all of us to be in. And um, you know, there are actually several scriptures that I could leave you with, but this particular one really resonated with me when I was going through um, whatever we discussed today. You know, that was when David was in the wilderness and was seeking refuge. Um, if you have the time, you could just read the whole of Psalm 91, you know, it's very impactful. So the verse one goes, um, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. So it doesn't really matter what is going on around the world. If you have God, you believe in God, follow his teachings and everything. Lots of things could be going on around the world, but because you believe in him, you know that there are, there is a better place for you to be. If you believe in him, you know that all these things are just meant to happen so that he is glorified in the end. All these things are happening so that we know that yes, indeed, he is God and he's going to give us shelter and comfort. So if you have the time, you know, just go over the whole of Psalm 91. So lastly, before I sign out, um, there are several scriptures that I'd like you all to read during your quiet times, you know, reflect on it. And if there's anything at all that you do not understand, um, you let us know in the comment section and we'll be glad to assist you um, through, you know, this journey. And um, if you stayed with us up until now, a very big thank you going out to you. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share with your friends and family so that they can also be blessed with the word of God. And um, until next time, we'll come your way with nothing but the best of informative and educative peace. Do stay blessed. Bye.